everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and today I have with Wendy here with me. Wendy has the coolest sewing and DIY channel. We've been online friends for years now, so when we met for the first time, it felt like we already knew each other. I'm sure many of you are already subscribed to her, but if not, then I'm honored to introduce you to her channel. We are here in the $1 a yard fabric section, and so I'm going to pick up three yards for April. April's going to pick up three yards for me. We're going to trade our bags. Yes. I'm gonna see what you forgive me, sew something. Yes, so after my video, make sure you guys head on over to her channel, subscribe, show her so much love, and I can't wait to see what she's gonna make from what I picked out for her. All right, so here is the fabric that Wendy picked out for me. It is this embroidered organza that's really beautiful, and the color goes into an ombre blue. So I currently have no idea what I want to make from this beautiful fabric. I think the most challenging part for me is that it's transparent and I don't have any lining or did we establish if we could purchase lining or anything? So once I confirm that with Wendy, I'll let you guys know. All right, thank you Wendy for challenging me with this fabric right here. And now let's get started. So at first, I was draping and draping ideas because I literally had no clue what to make from it. All I knew was that this stiff organza would look great as puffy sleeves. Then I got to sketching and another design feature I wanted to incorporate was a necktie. In the end, I had to make up my mind quickly because I was wasting a lot of time. So I decided on an asymmetrical puffy sleeve blouse with a tie at the neck. One shoulder is going to be exposed, so from the neck, I brought the neckline diagonally down underneath the armhole. When I was draping the actual fabric instead of the muslin, the design didn't look like it needed any darts since I was making it loose fit by flaring it out towards the bottom, which saved me a lot of time. All you need is the front bodice draped because the back side will be the same shape. I cut both front and back pieces out from the lighter blue side of the fabric because in this moment, I was thinking of how to incorporate the darker blue later. I cut both front and back pieces from the lighter blue side of the fabric because in this moment, I had no clue on where the colors should be placed and I was still thinking of how I should incorporate the darker blue color on later. Next, you can go ahead and sew the one shoulder seam and both side seams closed. I'm going to be sewing all my seams with a French seam so no raw edges are exposed on the inside. Moving on to the necktie, I first drafted one out of muslin before cutting the actual fabric, but basically the part that goes around the neck will be a straight band and then towards the bottom, I made it wider and cut the ends at an angle. One thing to note is that the back necktie needs to be extended about 6 inches so when you bring it to the front to tie, both of them are at the same length. Once I finalize the necktie piece out of muslin, I cut the piece into two so that there will be a seam in the middle. And then you can go ahead and cut out two front necktie pieces and two back necktie pieces. I decided to place them on the fabric so the color starts transitioning into the darker blue at the bottom. For the back neck piece, I just used the front piece as my pattern, but if you look closely, I extended the narrow side by about 6 inches. So each front and back necktie together at the center seam, so you should have two necktie layers. Then mark where the neckline of the bodice is going to be sewn to it by walking it around the top. Place the two necktie layers right sides together and sew around all the sides, leaving an opening where you place the markings. Turn the necktie inside out and press it so it lays flat, and then I'm going to set it aside because it's time to figure out the sleeves. To create the puffy sleeves, I traced a sleeve from a shirt I owned at home. Next, you need to slash and spread your paper pattern. 
Since I need to make the bottom a little wider as well, I just slashed my pattern all the way through, but as I taped it down to another piece of paper, I spaced out the top of the sleeve more than I do to the bottom because I want more of the poof to happen on top. I thought the amount I spread was going to be enough, but it turns out I had to slash and spread it even more to achieve the look I want. Like, look how big my final sleeve pattern piece is. For the full size sleeve, I cut it out from the lighter blue side of the fabric, and for the off shoulder sleeve, I cut it out from the darker blue. Fold the full size sleeve in half and sew the underarm seam closed. Then sew a couple rows of basing stitch along the top of the sleeve and gather it to fit the armhole and sew them together. I love gathered sleeves because it's very forgiving and you don't have to perfectly ease the sleeve to fit into the armhole. Before creating the other sleeve and attaching the necktie, hem the raw edge of the asymmetrical neckline. To make sure that it hugs my body, I slightly stretched and sewed some elastic as I hemmed it. Now we can sew one layer of the necktie along the top. This is a section on the necktie that we left open earlier. After one side of the necktie is sewn down, go ahead and sandwich the other side of the necktie over the top and top stitch it or stitch in a ditch it down. The second sleeve will need to be adjusted a little by trimming the cap off. Basically, you can cut it from the top of the underarm seam straight across to the other side. Then face the sleeve right sides together and sew the underarm seam closed. Gather the top of the sleeve just enough to fit the size of your elastic, and the elastic should fit around your upper arms. Then stretch and sew it to the top of the sleeve. To sew the off shoulder sleeve on, just tack it down to the side seam of the blouse with a zigzag stitch. To finish off the bottom of the sleeves, I also stretch and sewed elastic to bunch up the sleeves even more. Lastly, I hem the bottom of the blouse and I'm finished! Here is my final creation. I really struggled with the design of this blouse right here. I wasn't sure if I wanted to turn into a dress or a blouse. I think working with this material was a challenge in general because of the ombre color and while you're designing, you just don't know where you want the ombre to occur yet. For me personally, if I were to redo this design, I would place um, the blouse pattern piece lower so there's more of that ombre gradient on the top. But you know, I didn't know what it was going to end up looking like until I finished it like this. So we have a little bit of the, you know, the gradient here, but the rest of the top is kind of still the light blue color. The necktie, I just did a tie in the back and there's a little more of the darker blue as well. A uh, really cool thing I like about this top is that you could tie it in multiple ways. I just prefer it this way because it looks a lot more clean, but you could also just tie it to the side. You could tie it like this and leave it here. You could tie it into a bow. Like this for something more dramatic I guess but like I said for me I kind of just prefer tying it wrapping it around my neck to the back side like this 
and let it hang right there. Once again, thank you Wendy for giving me this challenge. I honestly didn't think I was going to create anything nice from it, but hey, I really like how it turned out. I feel so fancy in this. We went to do a photo shoot at the winery and I just felt so bougie, especially with the accessories that I paired with it. And as for the lining, I chose not to line it cause I just went with the see-through top kind of look. And you can't even tell because I'm wearing a nude bra underneath and this isn't as transparent since it's not like really tight fitted on me. It's kind of loose and flowy. So I think it works out. If you guys want to see what Wendy created and what fabric I chose, chose for her to make something out of, head on over to With Wendy's channel and be sure to show her so much love and subscribe to her channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this collaboration between the two of us and comment down below what you want to see next and who I should collaborate with next. See you guys next time. Bye!